Finally, we talk about one of my all-time favorite art mediums and the all-rounder when it comes to painting. Acrylics. So you've been thinking about trying acrylics and maybe even invest in some artist-grade paint. Or you have a set from the dollar store and don't know where to start. In both cases, I got you covered. This video will give you an overview about what you need to have and what you need to know in order to get started with acrylics. I will tell you what is good and bad about acrylics and we will find out together if it could be the right medium for you. Let's go! Acrylic paint comes in tubes most of the time. Acrylics can be mixed with each other and therefore you can mix every color possible with a mixing set of the primary colors as well as black and white. But if you are like me and dislike mixing colors, you can also get tiny tubes at an affordable price and choose from an enormous color assortment. You could also get a set of acrylics. They come in 36 or 48 color tubes or other sizes. If you're looking for one of those 48 or 36 mixing sets, I did a separate video and will link it up there and in the description. When you look at your artist grade acrylic paint, you can see some symbols on your paint tube. The exact symbols differ from brand to brand, but they always tell you two things. How opaque or transparent is the paint and how light fast is it? I'll show you a quick list of the symbols and their meaning. This paint is opaque and when you paint with it undiluted, it will cover the surface completely. This one is half opaque. There is also half transparent as well as transparent paint. Transparent paint will only give its hue to the surface you choose and you can still see what is underneath. Once you have your paint, you will need a bit of water. Sometimes you need to mix some water into the paint to achieve the texture that you want. Depending on your style, you can create some thick and opaque layers. Or you can use it completely watered down and as transparent paint. You will also need the water to clean out your brush when you want to paint with a different color. Also, acrylic paint mostly dries shiny. You should be aware of that because some people don't like that shiny finish. If you want to create a piece with a matte finish, there are, however, special finishing sprays that will make it look less shiny. Now we have the paint, we have the water and you also need a surface to paint on. The most common painting ground for acrylics is paper and canvas. But normal printer paper is too thin for acrylics. As we just established, we are using a bit of water. And the more paper fibers are in a paper sheet, the more water and therefore paint it can hold. I would recommend multi-technique or mixed media paper, which has usually 200 grams of paper fibers per square meter. You can find it at an art and craft store or some dollar stores have it as well. You also oftentimes find canvas there. For practicing, I recommend the paper and for paintings you want to hang up in your home or give as a gift, I recommend canvas or canvas boards. Lastly, you need something to paint with and that would be either a brush or a palette knife. You can paint complete paintings with only a palette knife if you want to. I tried it with this one and this one as well, but it is not finished and it works out fine. You can cover large surfaces, make some tiny strokes with the edge of your palette knife and definitely give the paint some very nice texture. Just keep that in mind. There are other things you can paint with, but most of the times you will use a brush for your acrylic projects. I highly, highly recommend using mixed media or acrylic brushes. Don't use your watercolor brushes if you have those. There are great brush sets available in dollar stores or art and craft shops. I personally don't notice the difference in acrylic brushes. I only think the quality of the brush is important for watercolor brushes. 
Now, one of the greatest things about acrylics is that it is water resistant once it has dried. And this makes it perfect for long lasting paintings and also home decor projects. You can paint on paper and canvas for sure, but you can also paint on plant pots, on furniture. There really are no limits to your creativity. You only need to be aware that you sometimes need to prep the surface for your acrylic paint. So check the internet about the special surface you want to paint on. A normal canvas you buy in the store is usually already prepared with a base layer, which is also called primer or gesso. Definitely be on the lookout for that ground layer when you buy canvases or so-called gesso boards. But most of the canvases you can buy are already primed. If they are not, you will need to use set primer or gesso. Otherwise, the canvas will absorb too much water from your paint and it will definitely behave differently than it normally does. These are the basic things you need to know about acrylics and also the materials you need in order to paint. I want to highlight some of the best qualities and pros of acrylic paint now. Maybe you find yourself in those descriptions and know immediately that acrylics will be a good fit for you. First off, you will probably love working with acrylics if you like textures. The difference in paint quality will be noticeable in the textured effect you can achieve and the control you have over it. If you enjoy working with textures, chances are great you will have lots of fun with a high quality acrylic paint set. There are also many different gels and pastes you can mix into your acrylic paint. They will temper even more with the texture, the effects or the drying time of your painting. Acrylics are also great if you dislike mixing colors and want a large color assortment to choose from. Acrylics have by far the largest color assortment available for any medium. The nice thing is that even the basic artist grade paints are very affordable compared to the other standard mediums like gouache, watercolor and oil. Painting with acrylics is fun, yes, but have you ever been to an art store and looked at these incredible colors and thought, oh my, which ones will I choose? Shopping for acrylics is loads of fun. If you want to concentrate on one medium that gives you a lot of different options, acrylics are the medium for you. No other medium has this much variety. You want to paint a portrait of your friend? Acrylics on mixed media paper it is. Or maybe you want to paint a plant pot to make it pop? Acrylics again. You need a large painting for your living room. You guessed it, acrylics on canvas. I realized early on before this video that I am not impartial to acrylics. I love them, but I really tried hard to find negative things about them. And here is what I came up with. Acrylics are water resistant, which means paint on your clothes or in a brush that you forgot to clean will stay there. You should wear something old while painting and always clean your supplies after using them. But let's be honest, that's what we should do with most art mediums. Another thing, the base layer or gesso is a time intensive process. If you want to paint in a sketchbook that is not suitable for acrylics, you should gesso it first. Otherwise you risk for pigments of the paint to seep through the next page. And a drying time for gesso can be up to 12 hours. Oof, that is too much planning for me. Other than that, I really couldn't think of anything else. I'd love to hear from you. What is there to dislike about acrylics? Am I being too forgiving with acrylics? Or do you agree with me? I'd love to hear what you think. I read every comment and can't wait to see what you think. So here is the final rating of the medium acrylic paint. On a scale from no fun to fun, it is a full five stars for me. You can paint on anything you want and the possibilities are endless. On a scale from pricey to cheap, I give it four out of five stars. Artist grade paints are affordable, but especially the extra texture gels, canvas boards and your favorite color in a larger tube will cost some money. On a scale from know-how to easy, I give it five out of five. 
you really only need to apply the paint onto your surface. The actual painting know-how of course is a different thing. But to use acrylics you don't need any special course or know-how at all. Last category, is it a hassle to use it or is it ready to go? I will give it 4 out of 5 stars. Once you got your paint, paper and a brush, you are ready to go. You do however need to clean up afterwards, wash out your supplies and let your painting dry somewhere. This is the best rating I have given so far and I'm pretty sure it will be the best rating I give for a while. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Last thing I want to ask you before I end this video is which medium would you like to see reviewed next? Paper art, maybe postcard pens or acrylic markers, something entirely different? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. I hope to see you in the next video and also hope you have a great time until then.